House of Glory Wrestling presents With Glory Comes Pride. Saturday, February 18th at the NYC Arena in Queens, New York. Tickets on sale right now at HOGWrestling.net. House of Glory, it's a pro wrestling event on a whole nother level. This isn't where I parked my car. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. NXT for last night, February 15th, 2017. The first night that the United Kingdom Championship Tournament has been defended since the tournament itself. Tyler Bate versus Trent Seven in the main event of NXT last night. We also got Amber Moon being positioned as the next opponent for Asuka at TakeOver Orlando. And we got a nice little situation brewing with the Authors of Pain, DIY, and The Revival as we head towards TakeOver Orlando as well. So we'll talk about NXT for last night. And we'll go over everything that happened very quickly. Uh, I do want to say, first and foremost, to begin this video, happy birthday to my brother Frank, Mr. Legionary. If you guys have been watching the channel, uh, you know, Frank is uh, the mastermind behind his band, Legionary. And he's provided us with some great fucking music over the last couple of years, man. Which you've seen in my older commentaries, which you've seen, you know, spread out through the channel. Uh, today is his birthday, so I want to wish him a very, very happy birthday. I hope he enjoys himself. I know he'll be partying this weekend. Uh, I hope to get to join him on Saturday, so we'll see what happens with that, but uh, I want to wish him a happy birthday, and I hope he has a great day, and hopefully I'll see him on Saturday when uh, he goes out partying and celebrates his birthday this weekend, because I know he's working right now, and uh, I got a big night on Saturday as well, man. House of Glory, Alberto El Patron versus Low Key in the main event of With Glory Comes Pride, House of Glory's next show, February 18th. 2017 from the NYC Arena in Queens, New York. If you guys are going to be in and around New York City, please come out and join me. Uh, I'll be there doing commentary for the show. I'll be there having a blast, and it's going to be a great time, man. Tickets are $25. You can go to houseofglory.net, I believe is the website. You can visit their YouTube channel. It's going to be a great, great fucking show. And if you're going to be at the show, come and say what's up. Me and Mr. Matthew Ryan Shapiro will be doing commentary all night for House of Glory. So that's going to be very, very exciting as well. Monday Night Raw SmackDown, Resident Evil 7 Part 6, and WWE 2K17 My Career Episode 31, all live on the channel as of this week. Make sure you guys check out all the content this week if you have missed anything on the channel. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And thank you to everybody who has shown love to Audible, man. You guys are fucking unbelievable. One thing that I did not know. With the Audible service, 30 days free to try the service. That includes one free audio book, audibletrial.com slash off the script. Thank you guys for taking advantage of that. What I found out this week is that AJ Lee's new book is on there. Superpower, or Crazy is My Superpower, I believe it's called. It's on there. You can pre-order it as a free book for signing up for the service. That's fucking amazing, man. Some of you guys tweeted me that, so... If you're interested in hearing the autobiography from AJ Lee, Crazy is My Superpower, that's going to be done completely by her. You can pre-order it as a free book. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. Ton of wrestling books on there. Daniel Bryan, Mick Foley, Bob Holly, The Death of WCW, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, Brock Lesnar, Chris Jericho. Ton of stuff on there. Over 180,000 books, if you guys don't want the wrestling books, man. Over 180,000 titles to choose from. And I want to thank everybody for showing love to Audible and Audible for sponsoring not only the podcast, but the channel. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script, compatible with iPhone and Android. Do it today. And no matter what you guys do with the service, you get to keep your audio book for free. Can't beat that, bro. So thank you to everybody. NXT last night. Felt like a very light show, man. It felt like a very light show. It was all about the main event. It's all about Trent Seven and Tyler Bate for the United Kingdom Championship. So we'll talk about that. Let's run through this really quick, man. Show opened up with the Authors of Pain. They defeated two jobbers last night. Didn't get their names, nor did I care, nor did anybody care. They were destroyed. Last chapter, 1 minute and 15 seconds after the match. Akam and Rezar destroyed these guys with this super collider. Their double 
power bomb that move where they pick them up and slam their opponents backs into one another and do the simultaneous power bomb unbelievable stuff there these guys are looking more and more dominant now that they're tag team champions can't wait to see what they do with these guys and i was listening to fucking solomon so you know he mentioned something about these guys being 22 23 years old that's fucking unbelievable and i didn't know these guys were that young they look a little bit older than 22 23 but can you imagine where these guys are gonna be five six seven years down the line man holy shit they could end up being one of the most dominant teams in company history if they continue on this path they're so young they they got so much to look forward to so being that they're this young and they're and they're progressing each and every week, man, the the future is bright for Authors of Pain. So they destroyed these guys last chapter, one minute and fifteen seconds to open the show. Billy Kane, Peyton Royce versus Liv Morgan and a mystery partner. Wasn't really a mystery as this was announced last week. Liv Morgan beat Billy Kay, and clearly, in typical Billy Kay and Peyton Royce fashion, they felt slighted. They felt cheated last week from Liv Morgan, so they go to Regal, they want Liv Morgan, they want Liv Morgan in a rematch, William Regal says, you know what, both of you here now, we'll put you in a tag team match, it's going to be Billy Kay and Peyton Royce versus Liv Morgan and a mystery partner of her choosing, so Billy Kay and Peyton Royce laugh, ha 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 ha, or let me do, let me do the laugh, <laughs> they didn't laugh like that, but they laughed in typical bitch-like fashion. So they left and said, listen, Liv Morgan has no friends. This will be a fucking cakewalk next week. So we come to this week. Liv Morgan does indeed have a partner. Ember Moon. Ember Moon is Liv Morgan's partner. And yes, I did have to listen to the cringe fucking music of Liv Morgan. Please. I I'm going to invest in some fucking earplugs, man. I can't stand it. it. It really, it really sucks. I hate that fucking music. A and she's cute, man. She she's bubbly and fucking, you know, uh, all hype. The music does nothing for me, man. Just like I mentioned on SmackDown, I forgot to mention it in my review last night. I see Mickey James come out, and it's like, uh, yeah, I love Mickey James. I think she's fucking great. You know, I'm glad to see her back on SmackDown, but Jesus fucking Christ, update the music, bro. Update the music. Some of you guys, I, I like the music. You know, it fits to her psychotic character to hear that type of music come out. But, I mean, it's 2017, man. We don't need to be hearing her old theme music from fucking seven years ago. You know, I don't mind. The, some of you guys were even going as far as to change the outfit. I, I don't mind Mickey James' outfit. You know, clearly what she wore back in, uh, back in the day when she was involved, you know, clearly no, nothing's going to beat that. But, you know, the outfit doesn't bother me as much as the music does. I mean, you got to get update the music. And Liv Morgan's music is just cringe. That's, that's just a, a constant and a consistent thing every week. But Liv Morgan and Ember Moon... Not much to this, man. You know, Ember Moon really didn't do much to aid Liv Morgan in her battle with Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. It was pretty much a, uh, a one-sided flop here. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce delivered their finishing move, I assume. Billy Kay had Liv Morgan in that wheelbarrow position. Peyton Royce off the ropes, knee to the skull. One, two, three. They took care of Liv Morgan. Ember Moon was beat down uh, most of the beginning of this match. Only went three minutes. Um, I believe Peyton Royce kicked Ember Moon square in the face. She fell to the outside, took her out of the match. That's what opened up Liv Morgan to be double teamed. And Billy Kay and Peyton Royce go on to defeat Liv Morgan. Next week, it was announced Peyton Royce versus Liv Morgan versus Ember Moon. Triple threat match. Number one contendership on the line for Asuka's NXT Championship. No doubt in my mind that NXT is positioning Ember Moon as the next in line for Asuka at TakeOver Orlando, and it will be fucking glorious. I can't wait to see what those two women do. That's exactly what the women's division needs, man, that type of match, and I can't wait to see what women, uh, what both women give us at TakeOver Orlando. We had a segment with uh, No Way Jose and Roderick Strong. They explained why they backed up Ty Dillinger. I mean, why not? Ty Dillinger's a good guy, man. He doesn't deserve to be bullied. He doesn't deserve to be beaten down three-on-one, four-on-one. That's exactly what Ho No Way Jose said. Ty Dillinger's very respected at NXT. We had to back him up. He's a good guy. Roderick Strong says, uh, you know, sanity, what they're doing is not right. I used to be like that back in my day, reckless and a loner and thinking that I could take anything I want. But Ty Dillinger's a good guy, man. Roderick Strong says he had enough of the bullying. Three on one, four on one, no. We're going to come to his aid. Ty Dillinger's a good guy. So that was pretty much that as the sanity Ty Dillinger uh, situation continues on to take over Orlando. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa finally make their return following their loss to the Revival at TakeOver San Antonio. They're in the ring, pretty much say, listen, we're here, we're back, 
We're good to go. We want our title shot. We want our match, and we want it right now. And I love this segment, man. All Through the Pain with Paul Ellering come out. I loved it, man, because I'm thinking back, you know what? Why doesn't WWE do this on the main roster? You know how you see something on Monday Night Raw where Roman Reigns comes out, his music goes off, he comes down the aisle looking all tough. Then you see a Seth Rollins and a Jericho and a Kevin Owens and a Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley. All their fucking musics go off. It's just overly produced, overly scripted. This brought me back to the days of, of old, man, where, you know, n none of these guys are coming out to interrupt anybody with their music blasting. You, you didn't hear the Authors of Pain music come out, you know, with, you know, come on when they came out. All Paul, all, all Paul Ellering did was come out with a microphone. Very simple, very direct. Listen, you want your fucking match? You got it in two weeks. Kiss, you know, kiss yourselves uh, goodbye again, you know? Issue your last rights to one another because it's going to be a, it's going to be the final chapter in two weeks. So Gargano told, I love you to Ciampa. Ciampa told, I love you to Gargano. They're expressing their love for one another as they uh, head for another showdown in two weeks with the Authors of Pain. So as they're telling each other that they love them, you got the Revival come out from the crowd and immediately attack DIY, shatter machine to both Gargano and Ciampa. I believe it was just to Gargano because he's always the one on the receiving end. But uh, DIY was beat down, Revival got in, quick attack, and left the ring just as fast, man. And they disappeared into the crowd. Authors of Pain seen the Revival. They rushed to the ring because they want to get their shot on the Revival after what they did last week. Revival got cheap shots on the Authors of Pain. So Revival with a quick cheap shot on DIY, Shadow Machine to Gargano. Authors of Pain did not get their hands again for a second week in a row on the Revival. And it looks like we got some... Uh, Tag team turmoil here in NXT, man. Very, 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 very interested to see where they go with this going into TakeOver Orlando. I'm assuming it's going to be all three teams in a match at TakeOver Orlando. Uh, where they go from there, nobody knows. But I do see that being the Revival's last match in NXT. I think that's going to be their, their swan song. I think that's going to be their last match. I think they're going to be on SmackDown Live following WrestleMania 33. That is just my prediction for that, but... Can't wait to see what happens, man. I'm a big fan of Gargano and Ciampa. Uh, I think they worked very well with the Authors of Pain. The Revival speak for themselves. Putting all three of those elements into one match should make for a special match at TakeOver Orlando WrestleMania weekend. United Kingdom Championship. Tyler Bate versus Trent Seven. This is the first time the United Kingdom Championship is being defended. Uh, coming out of that tournament, which I enjoyed very much. All the review is on the channel, by the way, if you guys missed that. And this is the first time we're seeing it in NXT. This is the first time it's being defended on American soil. So this is a big night for not only NXT, but for the United Kingdom Championship, being that it's being defended on NXT. Tyler Bate came out of that. You guys know the deal with him. 19 years old. He beat Pete Dunne in the finals of that tournament to win the championship. Tyler Bate was mega over at the end of that tournament. People just love the younger 19-year-old babyface overcoming Pete Dunne, who was a fucking savage. Trent Seven was one of those standouts in the tournament, so I was happy to see him back, him and his fucking mustache, his glorious mustache, and he's got some nice fucking slick back hair, man. Love it. But this match was very fun, bro. This match was very fun. We had both of these guys. They were given a ton of time to get their stuff in. This match went about 15 minutes. For the first five minutes of this match, it was nothing but Tyler Bate and Trent Seven admiring each other's mustaches. And that's all it was. Collar and elbow tie up. Tyler Bate had Trent Seven backed against the ropes. He played with his mustache. He admired his mustache. And then Trent Seven did the same thing to Tyler Bate. Collar and elbow tie up. Backed against the ropes. And he admired Tyler Bate's mustache. So it was them just having fun with each other. And the crowd seemed to enjoy it. It really picked up mid-match. We've seen a lot of big moves that these guys showed off in the United Kingdom Championship Tournament. Uh, Trent Seven was uh, really amping it up. You know, that British strong style really came into play briefly during this match. We've seen the seven-star lariat delivered by Trent Seven for a near fall. He did that. He did a jackknife power bomb, turned it into a single-leg Boston Crab. That created drama mid-match. Tyler Bate. Got in his uh, his quick rights and lefts, you know, so uh, th they showed off his speed and the power of his punches in this match. There was a big spot off the top rope where Trent Seven did this same thing in the United Kingdom Championship. He teased doing a superplex 
on the uh, outside the ring onto the concrete. Now you know that's not going to happen. I would love to see it. I would love to see it, but I don't think that's ever going to happen anytime soon. But they did tease it, just like he teased that I believe against Wolfgang in the United Kingdom Championship tournament. But Tyler Bate reversed that situation off the top rope into an exploder suplex. So he followed that up with the Tyler Driver 97, 1997 being the year that he was born. Like I said, he is 19 years old. Tyler Driver sit out powerbomb for the win. One, two, three, and he retained the United Kingdom Championship. Man, very, very fun match. They gave these guys 15 minutes to get their stuff in. They seemed to enjoy, uh, you know, what, what they were doing out there. The crowd seemed to love it, you know. The near falls and the intrigue that was the match and the hard-hitting spots of the match. Everybody at, at Full Sail enjoyed it, man. And I hope to see more of these guys on NXT television. I would love to see Pete Dunne at Full Sail. I would love to see uh, Wolfgang at NXT and Full Sail University, man. I would love to see those guys. Those are some of the best guys coming out of that tournament, you know? So, uh... I hope to see more of this. Maybe the United Kingdom Championship is defended at TakeOver Orlando. We don't know about that yet, but uh, uh, we haven't heard anything as far as what is going on with the UK scene and the WWE. We haven't heard much of what they're doing with the United Kingdom Championship. Uh, I know their ultimate goal is to get their own program over there and have their own division of UK guys uh, that will be televised on the WWE Network. I got, a, I got an article here about uh, Pete Dunne. And it was, it's nice, it's a nice read here. He was interviewed by, um, I believe, The Mirror. I don't know where they come from. I don't know if they're based out of the UK. But he was saying that uh, it was surreal how he was sitting down with Triple H and William Regal and they went over his performance in the tournament. He was getting a lot of praise from Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho. He was sitting around with Tyler Bate in the hotel room the night before the fucking final round. And he was like, how the fuck is all this happening so fast? And it, it was just unbelievable, man. They were scared to look at their phones, he said, because everything was just moving so fast. Three months ago, we were getting a tryout, and now here we are. We're in the finals of this fucking tournament, and we're fighting for the championship. And it's just happening so fast. They were not even expecting anything to happen. And now all of a sudden, they're showcased on the WWE Network in front of this large fucking audience for the United Kingdom Championship. First time WWE's ever done anything like this. You know, uh, he asked, uh, well, he was asked about Tyler Bate. He says Tyler Bate's incredible. He said that Tyler Bate can do anything he wants at this young age, 19 years old. He could be the best wrestler in the world uh, three, four, five years from now. He noted that he had a hand in training Tyler Bate. He's very proud of Tyler Bate. Uh, he wrestled Bate in Bate's first match and that their first match was similar to their match in the finals of the tournament, which he thinks came across very well. I thought that was a great fucking match, man. Like I said, everybody loved Tyler Bate going into that with the sneak attack and the fucking savagery that was Pete Dunne, man. He built himself up as a legit fucking killer that's going to do anything to take that tournament down. And when he did that attack on Tyler Bate right before the match and injured his ribs on the ring post, you know, that was, uh, that was a really shitty attack, man. And people got behind uh, Tyler Bate. And they wanted to see him win this thing. And he eventually did. You know, it came across very well. Uh, he said that we worked with complete confidence in what we were doing because we've done it so many times. And that's exactly why uh, we see why WWE went with those guys in the finals. And it proved to be uh, a very, very, very special night for both men on the United Kingdom Championship Tournament Final. But... I would love to see more of these guys in NXT. I would love to see more of these guys, period. But uh, I would like to see the title being defended more in NXT, man. The crowd loved it. I enjoyed it. It was a great match. It was very fun. And hopefully we see something at TakeOver Orlando with Tyler Bate. He's very over. And, uh, and I, I, really, I really think they got something special with a lot of these guys. man. Pete Dunne especially. We want to see more of him. Wolfgang. Um, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully we see more of them at TakeOver Orlando. WrestleMania weekend. But that's pretty much it, guys. Very light show. Not much happened on NXT. They planted some seeds here and there as we truck along. We still got six weeks till WrestleMania, so they're not going to give you everything right away. It's going to be a slow build, which we didn't get for TakeOver San Antonio. But I do believe WWE is going to go uh, full speed ahead here. I think NXT is going to really deliver at TakeOver Orlando. They'll be in their hometown. They're going to put on a special show. Hopefully we see some surprises. Who knows what's in store, man? I, I said this on Out of Nowhere. A NXT is going to look vastly different. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's cold. A lot of people are, are not really excited. There's no enthusiasm about NXT right now. 
You know, not even uh, six months ago, a year ago. It's just vastly different. But I said with Joe and out of nowhere that NXT is going to look vastly different following WrestleMania 33 because you know Triple H has been saying that he's not pleased with what's going on with NXT right now. He doesn't like losing a lot of the top guys. And, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a Major League Baseball team in where you, you trade off your talent and they, they get traded or a, a minor league system that's got all this fucking youthful talent, plentiful talent. And they get called up to the main roster. They get called up to the major league team. And now you got to, you know, you got to monitor what's going on in single A and double A. And you got to get these guys up to triple A. So that's exactly what they're doing. WWE doesn't have a lot of full-grown, homegrown talent at the Performance Center. Um, we, we're seeing heavy machinery uh, last week, which I think is going to be a great addition to the tag team division. Other than that, man, there's no, there's no really, uh, there's not any noticeable women coming into the Performance Center, or, or at least ready for WWE television. WWE's going to go out there and sign some free agents. Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole's being rumored. Uh, who the hell knows what they're going to be doing. But I honestly think that NXT is going to look vastly different after WrestleMania. And it's going to be very interesting to see what Triple H does. Because if we've seen anything from Triple H, he is going to take care of NXT. He will not let NXT suffer. He will not let NXT you know, struggle. They might be going through a, a little soft period now, but if there's anything that we've seen from Triple H, he cares, and he's going to do everything in his power to make sure we get the best product possible. So after WrestleMania 33, it's going to be very interesting to see where NXT ends up, and I'm very excited for it. But thank you guys so much. NXT review today on the channel. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. I'll be back with more content tomorrow, as you guys know. Off the Script, episode 157, Subscriber Stories. We're going to go over some news and rumors for the week. As we head into Fastlane, should be a good show next uh, next couple of days, so make sure you guys tune into that. And thank you for all the support on iTunes as well. Off the Script seem to be doing better than ever on iTunes and Podbean. Thank you guys for the love and support over there. You seem to be really enjoying the separation of the parts 1, 2, and 3 on Podbean. Really enjoying the, the feedback, and, uh, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it, man. But I'm going to get out of here. I got some stuff to do before Saturday's Big House of Glory show. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And like I said, hit that thumbs up. Support the channel and support Audible as well. AudibleTrial.com slash Off The Script. I'll see you guys on Friday for Off The Script. I'm JD. Have a great day. And I'll see you on Friday.